What's going on YouTube? Ferocity here. Hope you guys are doing well. Yesterday was Call of Duty Next, an opportunity for the Call of Duty community to have an in-depth look at the next Call of Duty game. For the developers to come on and tell us a little bit about what to expect for the next year of Call of Duty. And they did all this and we got to see some gameplay from some of the biggest creators for Call of Duty. But all in all, it was a pretty run-of-the-mill Call of Duty Next. And honestly, a little bit disappointing. Reason being, a lot of the surprises, a lot of the secrets were leaked a couple weeks ago. And that was part of the disappointment here for me and Call of Duty Next. But the other disappointment I had was that the same tired talking points were once again reiterated by Call of Duty developers. Talking about innovation, talking about being bigger and better than ever before, talking about being more rewarding. I hear this every single year and it does not reflect with the gameplay. It does not reflect with the experience. And I'm afraid that it's going to be the same talking points with no action behind them. Because that's what they said with Modern Warfare 2. That wasn't the case. They said it with Modern Warfare 3. Wasn't the case. They're doing it again. And if you watched any of the gameplay, it's very clear to see this is Black Ops Cold War mixed with Modern Warfare 3. And the one thing that a lot of people who liked Black Ops Cold War, including myself, enjoyed the most was that it wasn't Modern Warfare 2019. It wasn't like MW2 and MW3. And you've ripped that away now. So I'm very curious to jump into this game and see if it plays more like Black Ops Cold War or if it plays as cracked out as MW3 does. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing because the gameplay itself wasn't my main gripe with Modern Warfare 3. It was everything else that seemed to be out of Sledgehammer's hands. So I'm still willing to give Treyarch a chance, but there's just so much of the same rhetoric being spewed as we've heard time and time again. And it just gets exhausting from a community perspective. But let's dive into some of the talking points they did mention that I did like. First and foremost, the attachments. It was talked about on stream that the attachments are actually going to have positive effects to your gun. It's not going to be this mathematical equation that you're going to need to solve to figure out how to make your gun marginally better. It's going to act similarly to how old attachments worked. I love that. One of my gripes with Modern Warfare 3 is the overabundance and overall fluff of the attachments that are in the game. There's just too many for no reason. And I hope they've cut down on that here in Black Ops 6. It was nice to hear that certain attachments are just going to give you positive effects. And loadouts are going to be able to be shared across the community which is a nice touch they mentioned how it's a little silly that you have to go to youtube to find the best class setups i like that a lot of it's going to be in game that's way better for the community and a good step forward some innovation so maybe they are following through with their word and then they talked about prestige and one of the things i liked about prestige was that they mentioned unique rewards for prestiging to entice players because in the past, there wasn't really much to entice a player to prestige. It wasn't like you were chasing after anything more than the grind once again. And trust me, I love the grind in Call of Duty. That's one of the reasons why I love prestige mode. But the fact that they are changing that up and actually giving you some real rewards is going to be a nice change of pace. I just hope the rewards are enticing to many in the community and don't beg the question as to what was even the point. I hope they're actually worthwhile and there's something to want to strive for, similar to how players go for the camel grinds, right? Make it something that players are proud to showcase instead of just throwing it in the locker alongside of uh, all the other useless skins and things you earn when there's so many better skins that you can just buy. Which leads me to my next point. The skins. And you couldn't see my face there, but I was a little bit disappointed that they're showcasing skins already in Black Ops 6. Now, I know part of it's because they want to showcase that, hey, the game is ready to go. We can integrate the skins. It's great. But man, it would have just been nice to have things you could grind for from day one instead of having these skins in the game. And I guarantee you that 
them showcasing that skin was a marketing decision. Not a gameplay decision, a marketing decision. Because somebody saw their favorite creator using that skin and they went and pre-ordered the game. So it's genius on the business side, but to me, it again just showcases that they want to do style over substance. They want the style to speak for the game and not the core gameplay to entice you. That's the problem I have. And it would have been nice to just have a regular old beta where the focus was gameplay. Do you like the game, the way the game plays? Instead of trying to persuade you with the new shiny object that's available. But that's one of my few gripes that I've had with Call of Duty Next. So let's move on to the gameplay. I watched as much as I could of Call of Duty Next. I mean, having four hours to watch the whole thing is tough to do. But I think I got a good impression on how I feel about the game right now before I get an opportunity to play it. It's a Treyarch Call of Duty. To its core, it looks and feels like a Treyarch Call of Duty. Now, I'm going to kind of reserve judgment for the omnidirectional movement until I personally get an opportunity to play the game. Because I don't think it's fair to judge something before I get to play it. Especially with a mechanic that changes the game as much as omnidirectional movement is going to change the game. And I saw it on display a few times and I was a little bit taken aback. But again, it comes down to how does it play, how does it function, how does it feel when it's in your hands. I like the fact that you get total control over your character. I like the fact that you can properly maneuver around corners now aiming down sight and it really seems to be fluid. They've done a really good job there. Honestly, true innovation. So, like I said earlier, maybe these innovative words aren't as hollow as what it first seemed. Regardless of that, though, we have to see how it plays once it's put into the hands of the community. It can play well when the developers are playing. It can play well when creators are trying things out. But I want to see it in the sweaty Zoomer hands. That's what I want to see. Does it get to a point where it's just unfun to play against because I'm sorry, I don't have six hours a day to dedicate to this game. I can't have the the movement of a movement king. I'm just not going to ever be there. But can you utilize the omnidirectional movement in a positive way once you learn it? And I love the fact that there is a little bit of a learning curve that will come with this. And I really hope that it becomes rewarding for players as you begin to master it. But I still have that reservation in the back of my mind about this getting in the hands of the community and how that's going to affect my perception of the game. Is it going to be a little bit too sweaty? Is it going to be a little too game breaking? Or is it all going to mesh well together and play really well? Is the movement going to feel extremely rewarding? Is there going to be moments where people utilize movement and it punishes them instead of rewards them? All of this is going to be very interesting to see. And we don't really have to wait too long with the beta coming out tomorrow. And one of the beauties of the beta is there's going to be eight maps. So the game is going to feel extremely diverse from the get-go with the beta. So that's a very nice touch. And honestly... From what we got to see from the maps at Call of Duty Next, they look very nice. So I don't expect anything less from Treyarch as they're very good at designing maps. They've always been the top tier developer for map design and they've knocked it out of the park here, presumably in Black Ops 6. But again, all of these opinions are subject to change once I get to play the game. And I'm kind of looking forward to it uh, with early access being tomorrow. For the beta, uh, luckily I have PC Game Pass because I like Game Pass, so I get to access the game. I'm still not going to give Activision any money, but I'm going to see if my opinions are reinforced or if my opinions of this game change, and you'll hear about it here on this channel. So if you're curious on that, stay tuned to this channel, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you want to let me know how you felt about Call of Duty Next, leave a comment down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.